Coming up on our special edition of Chapman News, how to rent a husband in Russia and Beyonce being added to Mount Rushmore. Oh, did I mention we're also going to have a mandrel joining us in the studio today? I'm confused as to what a mandrel is. So am I, but I do know this. I'm Juliana Allegrotti. And I'm Evan Arani, and you're watching Chapman News. Welcome everyone to what us here at Dodge College are calling a comedy special. But if it's light on the comedy and heavy on the special, try not to hold it against us. <laughs> Russian President Vladimir strong-arm Putin was missing for 10 days last week. The world was in a frenzy trying to find out exactly where he was. Between March 5th and March 15th, instead of saying, where's Waldo, people were like, where's Putin? And Vladimir responded, as only Vladimir can, saying, quote, the whole situation would be boring without gossip. I need to work on that Russian accent. But firstly, Mr. President, you don't know us like that, okay? As Americans, it is our given right to gossip about people. Just watch. <laughs> See? <laughs> Secondly, Vlad, leaders of world superpowers do not just disappear out of the blue especially when said world superpowers have nuclear warheads. You know what other world leaders have suddenly disappeared? Kim Jong-il, Ivan the Terrible, Lord Voldemort. <laughs> Some believe Putin was with his girlfriend, the poor woman, as she was giving birth to a baby cub. Others thought Putin was suffering from a cold, like the sniffles are gonna deter that guy. But the most popular opinion was that Putin died. Alas, none of these are actually true, as dear old Pootie is as strong and as healthy as ever. Well, darn. Wait a second. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. We can now exclusively confirm here at Chapman News that Vladimir Putin was, in fact, trapped in a Russian nesting doll. And in the U.S., husbands may be hard to come by, so much so that dating websites and apps like Tinder are flourishing. Jules has a lot of experience with Tinder. Uh, but going back to the trend of Russian news, uh, in Moscow, there are apparently thousands of husbands just waiting around for anyone to pick up. All you have to do is call, but there's a catch. You can only have the husband for one hour. Moscow's Social Protection Department is launching a service called Husband for Rent, where Moscow residents can call this agency that offers, and I quote, young and strong men with a huge set of technical skills. The agency's website gave potential customers a scenario. You're a beautiful woman with a killer manicure that was done only yesterday, just like Jules, and you are not ready to get intimate with a noisy and horribly vibrating drill. I don't know what that means, but we have the men that can come to your rescue. So. If you're in Moscow and you're looking for a husband, call this agency, and while they're fixing your roof, chat them up, and maybe they'll come back for another hour. Hi, yes, I'm calling about the husband. Oh, oh. Two Secret Service agents are under investigation after they crashed a car into a White House barrier following a late night party. House Oversight Committee Chairman Jason Shavitt said, quote, drinking on the job isn't good at McDonald's, and it certainly isn't good if you work for the Secret Service. But let's rewind a bit here. Drinking on the job when your job is to protect the leader of the free world isn't so good. No argument there. But I had more than one teacher in high school who said the secret to their success was that they were functioning alcoholics. Maybe it's just the nature of being a California public school teacher, but in any event, come on, Secret Service. Couldn't you have just called an Uber? <laughs> oh, that was rough. All right, go ahead. Um, okay, Evan. Well, as you know, Chapman is a place of higher learning and curiosity. That's right, Jules. So we decided to send out Chapman News reporter Alec Bachner to ask some people some pressing questions. Hey guys, Alec Bachner here, and let me tell you, I'm one curious fellow, and I'm here at Chapman University, a place of intellect and knowledge to get some of my questions answered. So let's go. Who would you say is stronger, a gorilla? For you, because you look pretty strong. Gorilla, for sure. Probably. You don't. You ha haven't even seen the size of the gorilla. Gorillas are pretty strong. Man. Have you ever wrestled a gorilla? Not yet, but it's on the bucket list. Best part of grass, in your mind? Mm, soft. <clears throat> you know, I've been going around asking people this all over. Do you dip your cookies in milk? No, I do not. Why not? 
because I don't drink milk and I don't eat cookies. Are you lactose intolerant? A little bit. Do you hate joy? No. We're walking pretty fast. Why are you walking so fast? Because my Coachella ticket's coming in the mail right now. Oh my God. If you don't get there soon enough, they won't be there. I got a sign for it. Run, run. Question for you. What's your take on Godzilla? Serious question. You know, I haven't eaten for 17 days. Would you mind sharing? Sure. What do we got here? We have salad with um, cauliflower, spinach, chicken, and peanuts. I'm talking about food. I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Do you have a cough drop? <coughs> Do you have a cough drop? <coughs> Who said, give me liberty or give me death? Oh, what was his name? Um... Come on. Are you going to vote for Obama in this upcoming election? I'm not sure. Are you sh he's done a great job. Why don't you vote for him again? I'm not sure, but I have to get going. You have to go? Okay, vote for Obama. Nonetheless, can I have some? Sure. Can I, you know? Um, yeah. Clarification, that is food and it's delicious. Okay, so question for you. Burritos or tacos? Burritos, man. Why? They fill me up more than tacos. So. All right, I'll take that. All right, so I have a question. I just got to the US, so I'm wondering, what is this whole hashtag thing? Can you describe what a hashtag is to me? So texting, it's an interesting fad, don't you agree? Yes. Why do you do it? Talk to other people? Yeah. Um, why don't you actually talk to people? Excuse me, question for you. Uh, I'm actually on my way to class, so I would ask the question is Olympic. Do you know who Lance Armstrong is? Have you seen a panda around here? You haven't seen a panda? I, I just lost one over here. I... Are you sure? Personally, I just can't stand social media. It makes me dislike people for really superficial reasons. So I just, I try not to, not to do social media. Okay, um, next one I'm gonna ask you, how do you really feel? <laughs> <coughs> Please, cough drop. <coughs>Thanks, Alec, for that great report. The Chapman students, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now we're, welcome. we're joined with another Chapman student, Miss Sayla Carmen, who's more concerned than she is curious. Sayla, tell us, what's been pushing your buttons this week? A lot of things, Jules, but I can only pick one, so I went with this. Recently, a discussion has been ignited about the possibility of a different school mascot. It seems as though some believe a panther is not technically an animal and is not worthy of Chapman. First of all, from what I've gathered in the Jungle Book and the limited research I did on Wikipedia last night, a panther actually is the correct term for a black cat. It's a type of leopard. Second of all, and most importantly, is there anybody that really cares about this? I'm going to be honest, I heard about this and didn't even look up for my midterm cramming, which is very difficult to do because I get distracted with cat videos on YouTube. Who doesn't? And I think it was also suggested that a good place to start looking for a new mascot would be the city of Orange, right? Yeah. So, because we have so many interesting animals, people thought that possums, skunks, and that, let's not forget those darling cockroaches would be other options for mascots. Look, it's not that the panther is unmemorable. I'm sure if we were a D1 school and had 10,000 more students, maybe we would have more championships. There's nothing wrong with Chapman being known for something other than sports. Sorry, athletes. I think the film kids may have taken this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did. Right? But we're all proud panthers, no matter what we do. So go ahead. Suggest that we have a, pe a Pepe Le Pew instead of Bagheera as our mascot. It's going to look great around campus. Well, if we've got to change the mascot, might as well change the newspaper to the skunk. That's a winner. Oh, OK. And does President Doty really have a panther tattoo on his shoulder? If that's not enough of a reason to keep the mascot, I don't know what is. Do you want to be a skunk? Panther's your favorite, right? Well, thank you so go. much, Concerned Chapman student, for being with us here. Uh, coming up after the break, the Apple Watch is about to go on the market, but for some pretty high prices. And our fearless leader, Pete Weitzner, takes a crack at a new college at Chapman. Evan, say crack again. Crack. <laughs> <laughs>
don't stand by, stand up. Everybody knows Queen B, and although her lyrics may tell you to bow down, people might start to actually look up at her, maybe on a national monument. During rapper Tricky Stewart's interview with Vibe.com, the topic of whether Beyonce deserves to be on Mount Rushmore naturally came up. Tricky said, quote, let me just say she's the greatest right here, right now. But at the same time, I don't know if people realize she belongs on the Mount Rushmore of the best of the best, end quote. Now, this is coming from a guy named Tricky, so you know it's someone you can trust. But the dialogue he started is important. And as far as I'm concerned, we should definitely update Mount Rushmore to include Beyonce. In fact, I think every face should be a different type of Beyonce. Destiny's Child era Beyonce, Crazy in Love Beyonce, maybe mix in a Foxy Cleopatra Beyonce, Blue Ivy's mom Beyonce, one of every flavor. And another thing, here is my official motion to make Flawless the new national anthem. Also, single ladies should be danced to at every American school. United States of Beyonce! <laughs> Love it. Love it a lot. Apple is making headlines again with its new Apple Watch, and customers are pretty excited about it. After all, who wouldn't want to spend oh, $350 to uh, $18,000 on a watch that tells the same time as the watch you can buy in the child's sex section at Target? While most people are excited for the new watch to be launched in April, there is a sizable portion of people who have just said, oh, I'm just waiting for the iWatch 3 to come out. <laughs> Thanks, Apple, for making us feel obligated to buy yet another Apple product. Now, yesterday on Bloomberg Business, they had on Yahoo News product manager Nick De Alioso talking about the release of the new Apple Watch. Uh, but it's clear the anchor of the show, Shelby Holiday, had a couple of other things that she wanted to discuss. Getting the killer apps on that teeny weeny screen. How are you going to do it? But how small does it need to be? You're saying five to ten seconds. How are you going to take a long form piece of news and get it that little? But for app developers, you simply can't fit. 5, 10, 20 apps on that small screen. Myself. Or, but hold on, as like a theory. super cool 19 year old rocking that shirt and the mustache, are you going <laughs> to buy the $10,000 version? No, 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 I'm not. Amaze me. I, in fact, did go to college and I never thought it was because I sought a nourishment. What was it? A nourishment of learning? That's <laughs> nourishment what you want? of knowledge. Yeah, yeah nourishment yeah. of knowledge. I was never seeking a nourishment of knowledge. That could be knowledge. a new tag for Yahoo. All right, listen, Shelby. It was abundantly clear from the start that you didn't go to college for a nourishment of knowledge. But you should have probably kept in mind that the porn star looking guy over there in the interview is actually a multimillionaire. And just a heads up, when you see the super long line at the mall in a couple of months, it's not for the women's restroom. Chapman University never stands still, and the latest example is raising eyebrows and glasses. Our leader, Pete Weitzner, cracked open this story. Chapman's latest science buy is the chain of national bartender schools. The university insists that mixology is a science, and the bartender school gives Chapman's rising science portfolio its fourth college. Students are confused. I don't really understand what the necess well, like why that's necessary. What do you think of the idea of Chapman buying the National Bartender School? Uh, I don't know what they would do with that. Um... If a degree candidate passes this bar, they'll earn an MX in mixology with potential concentrations in tequila, vodka, or fireballs. I think science is ultimately good for jobs and it's better than creating other humanities or even an art studio. If it helps, then I guess that's good, but I don't really see the point. The crown jewel of the science program for Chapman will be right here, just east of the football stadium in this parking lot, the $150 million Center for Science and Technology. But that's years down the road, and so until then, Chapman hopes its science students can simply belly up to the bar. I'm Pete Weitzner reporting on campus for Chapman News. Not... <laughs> Chapman's accreditation team just submitted an application to have their cocktail artist be recognized by the science community, just like doctors. Now, Jules, when I was little, I dressed up as Darth Vader for Halloween. It was ex an acceptable costume for a seven-year-old, and now apparently for a grown man in North Carolina. A man dressed as Darth Vader walked into a bank in North Carolina and demanded money. This sounds like it's about to be a joke. He was accompanied by a shotgun, 
First mistake, that should have been a lightsaber. Police say the suspect escaped with an undisclosed amount of money. This makes number three for Vader, already having robbed banks in Ohio and Long Island. It's apparently becoming a trend for suspects to disguise themselves in costumes before attacks. If you see a five foot five man, not very tall, so don't be threatened, dressed in black with a Darth Vader mask, you are asked to call Pineville Police. Keeping your facts straight when it comes to hot topic issues can be tough. And here to prove just how crucial it is to keep these facts straight is Star Summer. Star, thank you for being here. Thanks, guys. I'm so excited to be here. Great, great. So uh, what, are you, what are you here to share with us? Well, I just wanted to say how horrible it is that Iris destroyed all her super old statues in the desert. Like, as someone who's into histological stuff, it was super depressing to watch. Well, you know, at least some of those statues that were destroyed were just copies, so it could have actually been way worse. But still, how dare this Jihad Joe go come into a museum and destroy everything? I mean, I know you're a rapper and all, but you can't just break old stuff whenever you want. Are, are you serious? I really don't think you understand. He's a murderer who's been beheading American journalists. Well, excuse me, Mr. I know what I'm talking about. You're grumpier than Bo Bobo Haram when they took him away from Michael Jackson. What? <laughs> Bobo Haram, Michael Jackson's monkey. Ugh, that man was so amazing, saving him from that animal testing research place and everything. Pretty sure Michael Jackson's pet was Bubbles, and uh, I think you meant the Boko Haram, a terrorist group in Africa. Tomato, potato. Do you guys have any gluten-free, dairy-free, and flavor-free crackers with you? Um, no. No, those sound terrible. We don't have any of those. Do you have, like, low blood sugar or something? No, I just like being obnoxious. <laughs> you know, scientists believe that there are no health benefits to not eating gluten. Do you really believe everything those smarticle people in white blazers say? They still think shots don't give you autism. Well, you, you can't catch autism, and that article you're probably talking about was actually probably proven to have been fake. Well, Jenny McCarthy doesn't think so. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't know Jenny McCarthy went to medical school. She didn't. She's just that amazing of a person. Like, she naturally knows so much more than all those idiots who went to college. Like, do you really need a degree to know science stuff like medicine? I mean, and it's celebs like these who should, we should really look up to, like Eva Mendez, who told us all how we could save our marriages. I probably shouldn't ask this at this point, but what did Eva Mendez actually say about sh saving our marriages? Well, she took an amazing stance the other day and inspired all of us women to not ruin our marriages by wearing sweatpants. Oh, okay. And how exactly would wearing sweatpants ruin someone's marriage? Well, they'd look horrible, to be honest, and they're just ugly. Okay, well, um, we're done here. Thank you, Star Summers, for that. And, um... It was, uh, we'll be right back with more fun stuff. We've got a Chinese elephant, some meth, and some other stuff. Coming right up, and we'll see you in a second. <laughs> chase ended on foot when the passenger of a stolen vehicle took off through a South Los Angeles neighborhood on St. Patrick's Day. The sedan's tires were shredded by spike strips, but the female driver continued on sparking rims, thankfully with her hazards flashing as she sped through the red lights, typical female driver. She was finally forced to stop, and it seemed like the passenger was going to surrender to the police, but then he took off running through residential neighborhoods, diving, diving police officers. Uh, clearly that officer did not play high school football. 
but that didn't miss the news van. The whole thing was recorded. That is pretty crazy. When you are a fugitive on America's Most Wanted list, uh, your one job is probably to keep away from the police and fly under the radar, right? Well, apparently not for Joey Patterson. The 22-year-old had been on the run for several months. He was in Boise, Idaho last week, which is probably a great place to stay out of the limelight, uh, when he went on Facebook and posted that he was going to a local softball field to play ball. I guess it gets pretty lonely being on the run and all. Sometimes you have to just let loose and play a fun game of softball, right? Now, much to his dismay, however, he never got to step up to the plate as the police quickly arrested him. Mr. Fugitive, you had one job. Maybe next time you should read your Facebook privacy settings. <laughs> and uh, right now to join us, we have a special guest uh, to spread the word of an organization named Charity Water. It's an organization with a mission to deliver healthy drinking water to 748 million people in the world who don't have regular <laughs> access to clean water. Uh, quite the task, uh, but definitely a necessary one. Joining us is Hank Luther, who is representing Chi Alpha Omega, one of Chapman's prestigious fraternities. Uh, welcome to the show, Hank. Don't call me Hank. Um, no one's called me Hank since I was pledged. I'd rather go by the name BJ. Perhaps this is a, a bit of a, a dangerous question, but why would you prefer to be called BJ? I think it stands for <coughs> low job, but <laughs> no, actually, um, first semester is an active. Mustache March rolled around, and uh, some of the actives kind of figured out I can't really grow facial hair. This is probably the most I can get. Um, so Chalmers decided to give me the name BJ, which actually stands for Baby Jesus. Um, um, but you know, I still have hope. Even Baby Jesus grew up, and he has that magnificent flowing beard, so. Praise him. It's, okay. <laughs> Quite the story, BJ. But uh, let's move on to your charity effort. I understand that your fraternity has seen an unprecedented support for uh, the Charity Water Organization uh, now. I want you to view me as a potential donor. Can you give me your sales pitch? All right, well, don't really see eye to eye yet with the whole water charity organization. Um, but rest assured, Jonesy's dad's part of Congress, so he's gonna come in and just pull a couple strings and we'll have it all set up. We've really got into House of Cards lately, so like everyone's been on Jonesy's <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, we don't really need to hear that, but uh, how are you not seeing eye to eye with an organization who intends to deliver water to third world countries? See, one of the bros in our frat convinced us to donate, you know, wounded soldiers, uh, leftover beers from parties, um, kind of just put them in containers, seal them up, box them up, ship them on out to those third world countries. If you're in a third world country, do you really want water? I mean... It's already, it sucks enough already, bro, so might as well just have a couple brews back with the bros and uh, play a couple soccer games with uh, whatever ball you find. I mean, it doesn't have to be a ball. Like, kick the can, right. Uh, kick okay. The can. So, so, kick the container. Well, it came with the beer. What? All right. So you, you see it as wasting funds if you donate water to charity. Mm, well, it's, it's our money. We, uh, we're the ones who get the pledges to rush chow. And they're the ones that raised all the money. So why would we take the money that we raised and give it to third world countries? They can raise their own money. All right. Well, Hank, BJ, whatever your name is, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, I guess we'll see you later. Okay. <laughs> Okay. And it looks like Walter White isn't the only meth dealer in town. Meth labs are popping up in public places more and more, and that includes a Walmart bathroom in Muncie, Indiana. Who knew meth labs are actually fairly easy to make and carry? Take this guy, for instance. Tyler Armstrong left a backpack meth lab in the Walmart bathroom. Now, that's what I call a compact meth lab. He then hid inside of a Taco Bell down, the near, down nearby, uh, which is odd since most Walmarts usually have like a McDonald's or a Taco Bell inside. And uh, police arrested him, but not before he got the new Sriracha Burrito. Good choice. I would go with a quesarito myself, but potato, tomato, whatever. <laughs> okay, uh, we, a popular Chinese TV show is under fire because they were practicing basic hygiene. I mean, pedicures are always good to get, right? Well, apparently pedicures 
for elephants are a no-no. The hit Chinese TV show Wonderful Friends is being accused by animal rights activists of wrongly exploiting animals. Mind you, the entire premise of this show is to have celebrities and pop stars perform tasks with zoo animals. The series debuted in January, and since then, stars went on shopping sprees with primates, have had a tea parties with a chimpanzee, made out with a capybara, and even licked a popsicle alongside a giraffe. But it wasn't until they gave an elephant a much-needed pedicure that animal rights activists began to protest. Due to so much criticism, Wonderful Friends has been pulled from the air. So moral of the story, don't take your elephants to get a mani-pedi in China. Now, as you might be able to tell by the noise coming from around the studio, coming up on Chapman News, Safari Steve will take us on a tour of the jungle. Just kidding, we're going to stay right here because Steve brought all the animals to us. And let's be realistic, if there's any part of the show that you'd want to stick around for, it's probably going to be this one. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Chapman News, everyone. Here in the studio, we have Safari Steve. Uh, now, Steve, can you tell us a little bit about your organization? Sure. Uh, Saving Wildlife International is a nonprofit wildlife conservation organization. So we basically take in displaced wild and exotic animals, use them in educational programs. So we go over to schools, community events, all over Southern California to teach people about wildlife and the environment. Awesome. So I uh, hear we have a couple animals. We do. Us I, have them. I have a few right down here. Let's see here. This first animal actually was found. Uh, this little guy was found uh, on our doorstep. So somebody actually had this animal illegally. Most wild animals in the state of California require a special permit. So um, someone had this guy illegally and dropped him at our doorstep. So they didn't know what to do, so they gave him to us. And his so. name is? This is Pokey, and he's an African pygmy hedgehog. And you guys are welcome to, to touch him. You can see how he gets his name. Let's turn him around there so everyone can see him. So these guys from Africa, um, obviously those, those little spikes are modified hairs. When they get scared, they roll up into a ball. Their skin gets really tight. The little spikes stand on end, and that helps protect them. So in Africa, even an animal like a lion won't mess with them. Okay, wow, that's incredible. Um, what kind of, what do they eat? Like, do they, how do they... You know, they're an insectivore, fed. so they eat insects. So a lot of people think they're related to porcupines, but they, a porcupine is actually a rodent where these guys like to eat bugs. Wow. So well, a nice little animal to have around. Pokey is adorable. He's, uh, he's pretty stinking cute. And in other states, you can legally have these guys, but in California, you can't just because if they were to get out and multiply, we might have some problems. They could uh, compete with native species and eat bugs that we might find beneficial. Wow. All right. Well, now uh, and I hear we have additional animals oh, here. We do. Us. See ya, Pokey. See ya. We'll miss you. All right. So what's the next? Oh, okay. okay. Yep. 
This is Brandon, and Brandon is uh, a crow, obviously, but he's not just any crow. He's an African pied crow. So you guys are also welcome to touch him. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to pass on that. Is he just along the back? or? Yeah, right there. Oh, wow, he likes it. Or he friends. likes it. Good friends. And so, uh, sorry, go ahead. Tell us more about Brandon. <laughs> you guys are asking such great questions. Um, these, this, is, uh, this animal is actually found living in someone's car. So each of our animals has its own story. His story is kind of sad. It's found living in someone's car. Again, an animal that you need a permit for in the state of California. Um, as you guys will find out after you graduate, everything in California is complicated. And uh, you need permits and uh, have to pay lots of money to, to do anything. And that's true with wild animals. And not just any anim anyone should have a wild animal, but that's especially true with an animal like this. Super, super intelligent, and they should be living anywhere but a car. So, so how did the name Brandon come about? I named him uh, after Brandon Lee from The Crow. Oh, okay. You're in film school. Come yeah. on. <laughs> Come on Should have known. What was I thinking? That. So it, how did you guys kind of like know where he came from? Is the white on his body kind of an identifier of, in some well, sense? That is indicative of the species. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, the, the, um, we, he was placed with us with the uh, California Department of Fish and Wildlife. And, uh, you know, we read books and look on the internet and you can tell what kind of animal we're dealing with. But actually to have a wild animal, you need experience with that animal. That's what uh, uh, lets the permit uh, be issued to you. Do you have an idea what he's trying to tell us right now? I think he's saying, look on my toe so I can fly, <laughs> fly on your cameras and poop on your audience. But so I, is that, I, how, I is that how, if you let go of his toe, would he be flying away right now? It's possible because oh, wow. he's fully flighted. Uh, with an animal like this, you don't want to clip their wings because like a parrot can use their beak to climb, but these guys, they have that straight beak, so. All right. Well, great. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we're going to go to a quick break right now, and when we come back, Steve is going to bring a third interesting secret animal out to join us. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Follow your dreams. Chapman University. Chemistry. Physics. Computational science biology. Start doing research in your first year. Soar to new heights. The Schmidt College of Science at Chapman University. Explore. Follow your dreams. Chapman University, a diverse, well-rounded education. Art, dance, music, theater. Empower your future. The performing arts at Chapman University. Create. And now we're back here in the studio with Steve, who has brought a mandrel with us. Steve, can you tell us a little bit about this animal? Sure. This is Kumba, and he is a male mandrel. He's three years old, and he came to Saving Wildlife International because he was born into a zoo to a first-time mom. Sadly, she didn't know what to do, so she rejected him at birth, and he's been with us since he was a month old. Wow. Okay. So you've had him since... How small was he when he was little? He was, pr he was pretty puny, so um, I don't know, maybe about... Five pounds. Okay. And with all the stuff surrounding him, it's he's probably a little nervous. What is the appropriate kind of etiquette for saying maybe hello or how's it going? Well, uh, to say hello in Mandra language, you bare your teeth and shake your head no. So, um, But he's actually not nervous at all. Um, a lot of people... 
they they think he might be nervous or they think he might be a, uh, you know a mean for just by the way he looks but you can see that he's just kind of chill and hanging out. This is his day yeah. job. So he comes out, he gets to basically educate people. And it's super important that we learn as much about these animals as possible because they are disappearing from our planet. This is a highly endangered species because of habitat destruction. And sadly, they're considered a delicacy in West Africa where they're from. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. It's a and very we, interesting. Nice animal. showdown, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. The, he, I'm, I'm, I'm marveling at his really beautiful face and he has some affinity towards you yeah. do you guys is he kind of like we're very your close buds? yeah you know i've been with this animal every day since he was a month old i literally haven't taken a day off i'm like i just want to go and go to disneyland <laughs> or something but i can't because i am committed to the animals and him in particular um, this is an animal that is incredibly social, and I am his family, so it's important that uh, that we we spend as much time together as possible. Come on over here, do you, do you think he's aware that you're a human, or does he think you're actually like his father? Or I'm well, um, I'm I'm the top monkey. I'm dad, and, okay. and I have to discipline him and okay. and uh, and give him the treats and do all the take the good with the bad. Come here, Kumba. Get over here. Come here, right here. Good boy. Good boy. So um, this is an animal that is the largest, most colorful of all the monkeys. You can see not only he has that beautiful face, yeah. he's flirting with you a little bit, but he also <laughs> has a really cool backside. We'll see if he'll show us. Kuma, can you get down? Down, down. You can see that right here on his backside, he has all these beautiful colors. Um, that helps him get a mate, and it might also help him uh, through the rainforest uh, find uh, his troop members or his horde members. That's a group of mandrels. Okay. Stay right there, Kumba. Amazing. Now, do you think, what would happen if a human were to directly approach one in the wild? Would it be You know, they probably situation? wouldn't get too close. These guys are pretty reclusive. Um, a lot of people are, you know, you guys are all kind of entering into the, the media world, and there's a kind of a saying in my industry, if it bleeds, it leads. Meaning that if an animal attacks someone, uh, it gets sensationalized, and Oprah jumps on the bandwagon, and everybody's like, oh my god, animals are so dangerous. Most animals, they don't want to fight. They want to be left alone. If you see a wild animal, um, just leave them alone. Um, the last thing they want to do is get into confrontation, because if they do, they can become hurt, and then they're not going to be able to survive in the wild. Wow. This is incredible. All right. Well, thank you, Steve, so much for bringing these My awesome pleasure. animals to and us. Uh, to you yeah. too. And, <laughs> and sure. before, I, before we go, I want to give a quick plug to my organization. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. You guys were so nice mm -hmm. to have me here. Um, it's Saving Wildlife International. We're a nonprofit. Um, tell all your rich parents they can get their tax right off. If you guys like animals, we'll bring them right to your frat, right to your house. We'll, we'll share animals with you. We're all about education, hands-on opportunities. Um, we do uh, school programs and that kind of thing. Our website, our uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, all that stuff is all wild SWI. So wildSWI.org, hashtag wildSWI. Follow us, like us, uh, and uh, if you love animals, because uh, we have to look out for these guys. Wow. Well, thank you so thank much, you. Steve, for being with us today. Good boy. Uh, Good boy. Now, uh, if you go ahead and log on to our website, it's chapmannews.tv to see all of our episodes, uh, Chapman Newsy bios, and the top headlines. Uh, and make sure you also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Twitter and Facebook. Facebook.com slash Chapman News. Twitter and Instagram at Chapman News. And YouTube at YouTube.com slash Chapman News. That is all we have for this week. Steve is heading back to the jungle, and me and Evan are going on spring break. Yeah, but in two weeks, we'll be back here in the studio for our regular newscast. I'm going to be honest, it's probably not going to be as upbeat. There's probably going to be some sort of officer ball shooting. It's going to be bad. Maybe right some now. women's water polo Ooh. highlights. And who wouldn't want that? You'll miss us. We probably won't miss you. Good night. See you in two weeks, everyone. Two weeks. Peace. Woo!